It was magic time in Canada. Montreal was granted a big league franchise in 1969. How would baseball translate into another language? And which anthem would come first? O Canada or the Star Spangled Banner? Woody found that proud Montrealers didn't much care. They just loved having a piece of the action. Trumpets do something special for the French, and led by the golden snarl of horns, they have welcomed many colorful losers. It seems, too, that a dashing uniform softens the cutting edge of French logic, a theory well known to such as Napoleon III and the Montreal Expos baseball team, whose players are togged out in colors brighter than the reputations they brought to this cold-weather preseason welcome parade. Indeed, some of the names disappeared from the roster almost as quickly as they were peeled from the cars borrowed by the Chambre de Commerce des Jeunes de Montréal. Scoreboard and statistics, like everything else in Montreal, are bilingual. To our ears, Voltigeur de Gauche sounds more like a hussar than a left fielder, but then Montreal's left fielders sometimes play as if they were hussars. And in the bitter blue nights, there are often plays for which a new language must be invented. Still, Montreal survives with the sturdy jauntiness of a piney Paris, and the passing legs will match a summer day on the Place La Concorde. Hockey players have thicker legs, but in Montreal they share that admiration, of which the Expos would like a part. Montreal seems as unlikely a place for baseball as the Canadian Northwoods for orchids. Queen Elizabeth is on the money, Joan of Arc is in many hearts, and the Hockey Canadiens are worshipped as winners. Perhaps characteristic of the humble beginnings and high hopes of the first big league team outside the U.S. is Coco Laboy, who toiled through nine minor league seasons before getting a chance this year. These people here, they crazy about baseball and uh, they come to see us every day there, even if we lose every day. Well, are French fans different from, let's say, Puerto Rican fans? Well, they are a lot different. See, yeah. in Puerto Rico, you have to have a winning team all, all the time, but here, they don't care if we're going bad. <laughs> Montreal returns his warmth with a bon chance for his birthday. Dear to the fans is Rusty Staub, who, when a trade seemed to be falling through, refused to return to Houston. He loves the fans for sticking with the club through a 20-game losing streak. Some people really wanted us to lose four or five more games to set a world a world record, you know, or the, or the establish the record in the major leagues because of the fact that it just seemed like the thing to do after losing 20. But we really weren't for that. We're glad we, you know, discontinued the losing streak at 20 games. But uh, I just, I, I really can't tell you enough about the way the, the fans here have made most of the players here feel. Bad baseball teams, like bad movies, are always very big on ballyhoo. And this week, Montreal came up with a promotion stunt calculated to show that there are labyrinths under the cellar by matching sports writers against the Alouette football team on the diamond. Expo leader Gene Mock can raise a faint smile for frolics like this. They are a welcome change from managing, where the Expos menaced the record he'd like to forget, 23 straight losses with Philadelphia. Young in years, Mock already has gray hair. You know, that's a funny thing. I don't think that gray hair came from any particular losing streak. I think that uh, when a fellow likes to win, uh, it's, it's very difficult to go through a building program like we went through in Philadelphia and as we're going through here. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem. A diplomatic levee could hardly have more banners and anthems than the preliminaries to an expo game. After the Star Spangled Banner and O Canada, the proceedings become a little less organized, however. Let's go down, baby! We go all the way now! And the high style is limited to the crowd and to the girl ushers garbed for a dancing police number at the Folie Berger. The Expos hit and scored more freely than the Mets used to in their wilted salad days. And Rusty Staub's complaint led to a lively search for grease pitch material on the back of Dick Selma's neck. As seen by a French announcer, the game sounded like the better moments at Austerlitz. At last, however, it was another unhappier battle, another Waterloo for the expansion Expos, who couldn't hold back the tide of Cub runners, and another losing streak was in the making. Maintenant, la situation est grave. 
Il y a un besoin sévère de lanceurs et le club a des faiblesses au bâton. Mais il y a d'espérance pour l'année prochaine. Or as they used to say in Brooklyn, wait till next year. This is Haywood Hale Brown at Jerry Park in Montreal. Stay with us for a solo voyage across the Atlantic. 